The first story of this episode is something I kept seeing over and over, and that's the story of Google's machine learning technology helping NASA discover a new exoplanet, or a planet that orbits a star outside of our solar system. So with the help of Google, NASA was able to discover a planet orbiting a star outside our solar system that a human never discovered through the observation of data. First off, finding an exoplanet is very difficult for astrophysicists. Some astrophysicists state that it can be as difficult as spotting a firefly next to a searchlight thousands of miles away. And you may wonder, how do they even find planets that can be dark and cold thousands of light years away? And it's not just looking through a telescope and saying, oh, there's one. What physicists have been doing is looking at the brightness of stars and other solar systems over a long period of time. When an orbiting planet passes in front of that star, the brightness decreases by just a little, and from that they can analyze whether it's due to an orbiting planet or not. They've been using signals gathered from the Kepler Space Telescope of around 200,000 stars that they track over a four-year period. This data makes for over two quadrillion possible planet orbits, so Google utilized machine learning to try to sort through this data faster. Now remember, machine learning isn't about programming in all the parameters that you look for. It's about giving the program lots of data and having it learn on its own what to look for. Like showing many pictures of people versus cars, and the algorithm looks for differences so it can easily identify one versus the other by learning the differences. Well, in this case, they showed it thousands of data points on brightness changes due to exoplanets as opposed to non-exoplanets, so the program could learn what to look for. This model was built using TensorFlow open source software library, which was behind the functionality of several Google apps. Then they used the program to look at data they hadn't seen before to test the accuracy. Then they looked at stars with already known exoplanets to see if they could find more, and that's where two new planets were discovered. But who knows how many more might be discovered from data we already have from machine learning. Then the next story is in biomedical news, and that's a new robotic hand named after Luke Skywalker. This robotic hand will allow amputees to touch and feel again and essentially regain their senses. Last year, a man named Kevin Walgamot, who had lost his arm in an electrical accident 14 years ago, participated in an experimental program at the University of Utah's Neuroprosthetic Program. Neuroprosthetics are also thought of as brain-computer interfaces, allowing people to gain control over their movements and senses through the connection of their brain and a computer. This will essentially allow people to move and touch things with a robotic hand purely with their thoughts. And several weeks ago, a team presented the promising results of their experimental tests, and they found that through sensor feedback, they created a closed-loop system that mimicked biology, allowing people to feel and touch again. And this man named Kevin, who participated in this experiment, after 14 years of not being able to feel anything, was able to manipulate objects and also feel texture. During the experiment, he said that when I thought about moving this or that finger, it would move almost right away. And this obviously is a huge step in helping the hundreds of thousands of people who lose control of their limbs every year. I did see that a bioengineering PhD student helped work on this, but biomedical projects like these need many engineers such as computer, electrical, and mechanical often to make the entire system work as needed. The next story is about a way researchers have discovered to see through walls of an unknown material. Researchers at Duke University have used a narrow band of microwave frequencies to essentially see through walls without knowing what the material is made of. Now note that microwave signals are not just used for microwaves, just like radio frequency signals are what phones, satellites, and Wi-Fi use, hence not just radio. Then microwave signals are used in various sensors, defense applications, and in this new research as well, not just heating up your food. Microwave signals just classify electromagnetic waves of a certain range of frequencies, just like visible light is an electromagnetic wave with a different and higher range of frequencies than microwaves or radio waves. This research has applications in security, of course, but also in helping construction workers locate pipes and wires behind a wall. Now, there are technologies out there that allow us to see through walls already. But one researcher on this project states that with those technologies, a wide range of frequencies are used, causing the devices to be very expensive. Plus, the resolution isn't very good, so while they can be used to locate a person on the other side, it's not as good at finding small wires. Now, like I said, this new method doesn't need to know what the material is beforehand, but why is that special, though? Because current methods need to know the material, because as waves interact with the material, they become distorted, and by knowing the material, the software can predict how that distortion will occur, so they can account for that error and still gather image data. But this new technique doesn't need that. Research had to write an algorithm that separates data into parts based on how surfaces distort waves. Researchers want to combine this technology with machine learning in the future to see through walls and recognize objects in an easier way than ever before. And the last story is about NASA sending something called the Parker Solar Probe to essentially touch the sun. Now that's not actually going to happen, but it will get very close. NASA has been working on this project since the 90s, and as you can guess, one of the underlying issues is the intense heat from the sun. 
Now the probe is actually going to get within about 6.4 million kilometers or 4 million miles of the sun, which seems far, but this will go directly into the sun's outer atmosphere. As a point of reference, Mercury, the closest planet to the sun, is about 58 million kilometers or 36 million miles from the sun. And the probe will also be more than seven times closer to the sun than any other spacecraft has ever been. This mission is possible because of a very strong heat shield that can withstand temperatures of 1,370 degrees Celsius or 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The spacecraft will collect lots of data from the sun, such as solar flares or sudden increases in the sun's brightness, which can affect communications on Earth as well as satellites in orbit. This is set to launch in 2018 and will help us learn more about the sun than ever before. And that's where I'm going to end this episode. If you liked it, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.